Hi friends, welcome to biologyexamsfurry.com. Today's topic of our discussion is PUC vector, how recombinant colonies are selected using blue-white screening. At the end of this session, you will be able to understand the features of PUC vector, how blue-white colony screening works within 5 to 10 minutes. If you are new to this channel, please subscribe and support this channel. Let's begin. What's a PUC vector? PUC vector is actually a modified vector PBR322 vector. It is having small size 2686 base pairs with high copy number. That is the advantage over PBR322. It is so called as P for plasmid and U and C for University of California. The vector was developed by Messing and co-workers in 1983. Let's move into the features of the vector. As you can see, it is having an E. coli ORI. ORI from E. coli, just like PBR322. Here it is having a mutation that makes high copy number. Then two selectable markers. First one is ampicillin resistance gene and the second one is lacizid gene. Ampicillin resistant gene calls for genes that provide resistance against ampicillin, whereas lacizid gene forms beta-galactosidase enzyme. So there are 13 restriction sites within this lacizid gene. So the three regions are E. coli or RI, then two selectable markers, one is ampicillin resistance gene and lacizid gene with unique restriction sites for inserting our gene of interest. Now where we insert our gene of interest in this vector? So this lacizid gene as you know, in LAC operon, this lacizid gene forms the enzyme beta-galactosidase. So we are inserting our gene of interest using any of the restriction enzyme. So in this region, there are there is a polylinker sequence with 13 restriction sites. So we are inserting our gene of interest into this region. So suppose this is our gene of interest. So that this lacizid gene is no more functional. This is called insertional inactivation inactivation of a gene upon insertion of our gene of interest. So in the case of recombinant vectors with gene of interest, that particular bacteria cannot synthesize beta-galactosidase. This is called insertional inactivation and this helps in selection of colonies. Now moving into blue-white screening. After transformation experiment, we'll be getting three types of colonies. First one is non-transformed second one is transformed with non-recombinant vector and the third one is transformed with recombinant vector. Let us zoom in this vector. As you can see, in transformed with non-recombinant, the vector is unchanged. There is no change in vector. Whereas in the case of transformed with recombinant vector, our gene of interest is present in the lac is a region so that this lac is a region is no more active the process is called as insertional inactivation now let us see how selection occurs so we are having a medium that contains ampicillin xcal and iptg iptg is an inducer of beta galactosidase gene it binds to the repressor and favors the transcription of beta galactosidase gene Non-transformed colonies cannot grow in an ampicillin medium as it doesn't have the vector. So it is very easy to eliminate the non-transformed colonies. Now we need to find out these two. So as you can see, in the case of transformed with non-recombinant vector, this is a vector. So here the lacizid gene is intact. Therefore, this vector, this lacizid gene will synthesize beta-galactosidase. Beta -galactose galactosidase will convert this xcal into a blue product so that transformed with non-recombinant vector will appear as blue colonies whereas in the case of transformed with recombinant vector as you can see the dna insert gene of interest is in the lac is a region we have inserted our gene of interest in the lac is a region therefore this region is no more active so this region cannot synthesize beta galactosidase therefore this colony remains white thus it's very easy to select transformed non-recombinant colonies from transformed recombinant colonies recombinant colonies will be in white in color whereas non-recombinant ones will be blue in color 
This is the main advantage of PUC vector over PPR322 vector. The selection is very easy. Hope you are clear. Now what are the advantages of PUC vector? PUC vector it is having high copy number. As I said, there is a mutation in E. coli ORI, origin of replication, that results in high copy number per cell. Then easy one-step selection of recombinant colonies. It's very easy. By color, we can pick out non-recombinant and recombinant colonies. Then many restriction sites in multiple cloning sites, approximately 13 restriction sites within this lacquer polylinker region. A disadvantage is the fragment size. It's a small vector, therefore fragment size, maximum fragment size or gene of interest size is 15 KB. Hope you are clear with this. Thank you so much for your support. You are with biologicsanswary.com.